everyone. So today I'm going to show you how to create a paint by numbers type of activity using Google Forms. I have an example of my Google Form here that I've created into a paint by numbers activity. The concept of this activity is that every time a student answers a question correctly, they have a section of their artwork filled. By the end of this activity, they will have a completed artwork. Here's my form that I created, and as you can see, it starts at coloring in the ones, and they have to answer this question correctly. If students do not answer the question correctly, for example, in my first one, if they do not answer it correctly, it tells them that it's incorrect, and if you make the question required, it does not allow them to move on until they get the question correct. Once it is correct, they'll be able to move on to the next question and a piece of their artwork gets color added to it. And then at the end, I have them take a little survey. And then they submit it. And this is what we are going to do today. Before you go to create your form, you would need to find the, the artwork that you would like to use. For me, I went to the Color It by Numbers website, and what it is is you can do paint by numbers artwork online. You just click the online version, and then you are given choices on the types of art you want to choose, and from there you can choose how complicated the art is. Once you have chosen your artwork, you will fill your art in steps according to the color. First, I'm gonna take a screenshot of this unfilled so that it will be my cover art. So you would take a screenshot of this and save it. Then you're gonna fill all your artwork in stages. So now I'm gonna fill out all my ones. Once you have gotten all your screenshots of the artwork, then you can start on creating your form. You could add a title, mine's chapter two review. You can add a description of this activity. So now I'm going to insert what my art is and I will insert the black and white unfinished image. And I can say paint. I can add a name section. Once I'm done with my first section, I can add a section. And if I wanted to change the theme color of my form, I would just go to the customize theme choose a color or choose an image, I will just change the color. Okay, so this section, and then I'm going to add an image to it. I added the same image as the original, and I can add title to my image. Once I've done that, I can duplicate this section. And I'm going to change this section that I just duplicated to color the two. And then I'm going to change this photo. To change the photo, all you have to do is click on the three dots on the corner. Click change. Okay, so then I can duplicate this section. Once I have inserted all my pictures, uh, for each section, I'm going to start at the first one. At the bottom, I'm going to add a question. I'm going to click Add Question. In order to make it so that students can only move on to the next question if they get the correct answer, we're using a feature called Response Validation. With the short answer, Response Validation, it requires the student to have the correct answer. 
So you're going to click on short answer and you're going to click on response validation. What I like to do is I would have the instructions. So for example, mine says, I'm going to simplify the following expression and I am going to add a description and put my expression in the description. The reason why I do that is because if I continue on in this line, when students see the question, it will look weird. So I like to put it in the description. In order to do response validation, you need to tell the form what answer you're expecting. I like to use text response for web the answer is in a number or a text, I still use text response because if you choose the option contains, it has to contain specifically that answer. Another important thing to include in your response validation is the type of answer you're looking for. So when I typed in my answer, I didn't put spaces between the characters. So I'm going to give the instructions to students that says no spaces between characters so they know not to input spaces. You could put a custom error text to help remind them uh, of the correct answer. Another thing I like about using text versus any of all these other options is because if students accidentally put a space after when they type their answer, it won't consider it incorrect. It will still consider it correct or even a space before. As long as the answer contains these things and it's no spaces between them, they will be marked correct. So when I look in the preview, if I write 3x minus space 8, it will tell me that I'm wrong. However, if I put 3x minus 8 and put a space, it won't tell them that it, it's wrong. It will consider it the correct answer. So I have entered all the questions for each section. So now I'm going to check to make sure it's how I want it to be. Once I've checked each section and I like the way they look in the student preview, then I'm go going to now go back and make all my questions required. This, this way, students uh, are not allowed to move on until they have the correct answer. Okay, to make each question required, I just click on the question and click on required. And that's how you make a color by numbers activity using Google Forms. And that's it. Thank you for watching.